I am Rodrigo Duterte. I'm a Filipino. I love the Philippines because it is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. News Night, where we go above and beyond the headlines. I'm Pio Ontiveros. Our top stories. Is Pidea ready to take the lead in the government's war on drugs? The agency admits the task is not easy as it needs additional manpower. Senator Lila De Lima is frustrated after the Supreme Court junked her bid to nullify her arrest. Her lawyers say the fight isn't over. And it appears a majority of Filipinos still trust President Rodrigo Duterte, while a separate poll also shows record low satisfaction ratings for the House Speaker and the Supreme Court Chief Justice. Two days after she failed in her bid to nullify her arrest, Senator Laila Drima shows up at a regional trial court for arraignment on another drug charge. There, she didn't hide her frustration over the high court's decision to junk her plea. Our Angel Limayo tells us more. A visibly thinner Senator Laila De Lima arrived at the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court. She's been in detention for eight months now. And she may stay there longer after the Supreme Court denied her bid to void her arrest. She's pertaining to the nine justices who turned down her petition for lack of merit and upheld the jurisdiction of the lower court to hear her drug cases. Dilima says it's ironic that international organizations clearly see that the cases filed against her are all but part of political persecution. As far as her lawyers are concerned, the fight isn't over. Hihingin ulit namin yung na yung Korte Suprema ay mabigyan ng second hard look yung kanilang desisyon. Former Senator René Sagisag also hopes that at least two justices will join the minority to overturn the decision. Kung si Laila, after winning, tumahimik o sumali dun sa partido hunyango, hindi siya ngayon nakakulong ngayon eh. The prosecution panel welcomes the High Court's decision. We are also happy that the uh, evidence uh, which, we, which will uh, support the allegation in the information on that uh, particular case were sustained by uh, the uh, Supreme Court. The finding of probable cause uh, remains. However, the Lima's arraignment at Branch 205 was postponed because of her pending appeals. This after Judge Amelia Fabros Corpus denied her second motion to quash and motion to attend a Senate hearing on Kian de los Santos' death. Former Senator René Sagisag says the Lima's real crime is being critical of President Duterte on human rights issues, but is confident the Lima will be on the right side of history. Anjali Mario, CNN Philippines. PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa says he accepts President Duterte's decision to take the anti-drug campaign off their hands. Speaking to CNN Philippines, de la Rosa adds he cannot help but feel sad over the decision, but he considers this development a positive step. Policemen ko man o yung mga drug personalities, still uh, buhay pa rin ang tao yun. So, uh, kung ba, yung... Uh, anyway, uh, just, I just uh, uh, look at it uh, positively, yung executive order na yun. Sabi siguro ni Presidente, masyado ka ng pagod, anak, pahinga ka na. Ito, hindi natin magpaplastikan. Oo, uh, sir. Sure. Frustrated si Presidente sa naging reaksyon ng taong bayan. It, it goes to show na si Presidente hindi diktador. Na, na nakiramdam siya sa pulso ng taong bayan. Kung totoo man yun, ha, granting na talagang totoong sentimento ng ng general public yung lumabas sa survey, sabi ni Presidente din, I am working for the Filipino people. So, ano yung gusto ng taong bayan? Disatisfied sila sa war on drugs? Yun, hinto natin itong war on drugs. Catch the full interview with the PNP chief tonight on The Source at 7.30. Well, now that President Duterte has removed the national police and the helm of the drug war, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is facing a tall order. Is Pidea ready for this? Our Camille Abadisho finds out. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is stepping up its operations after taking over the lead in the war on drugs. 
The agency admits the task is not easy, especially with lack of manpower. It will leave a, a big vacuum, especially on street-level operations. So unlike before, when PDEA used to focus only on um, high-value targets and high-impact operations, this time we will have to fill in the gap where the PNP left off. The PNP has about 195,000 personnel, in stark contrast to PDEA's almost 2,000 personnel nationwide. Malaking malaki talaga ang contribution ng PNP because they have the numbers. They have the presence all the way up to the municipalities. And uh, definitely, yung presensya nila, nandun, natutugunan nila kaagad, yung street-level pushing. PIDEA is planning to recruit 1,000 to 1,500 agents every year to fill in the gap. But this means additional budget, as training will cost 200,000 pesos per agent or 300 million for 1,500 agents. PIDEA's budget is at 1.4 billion pesos, plus 934.5 million pesos for additional facilities, equipment, and manpower for 2018. But with their new role, PIDEA says they would need more funds. Kulang na kulang talaga. Dahil nga po, this was based on the premise that PIDEA will focus on high-value targets and conducting high-impact operations. While transitioning to a much bigger task, they would seek assistance from the PNP. Mas konti na nga po kami. If we deploy on the ground and then... Uh, we are doing the actual anti-drug operation and then hostile forces start firing on us and we get pinned down. Who will help us? We're ready to provide support to the PIDEA, whether it's coming from the national down to the municipal level. When we, they need our support, we are, met, we are working for the same government. So we will not deny them any of the assistance that we can provide them. With over 76,000 anti-drug operations, the police produced 90% of the results of the drug war from July 2016 to September 2017. But the relentless campaign has a price. Over 3,000 drug suspects dead in police operations, while PIDEA agents killed only 28 suspects. Camille Abadisho, CNN Philippines. The reason for President Rodrigo Duterte's recent outburst against the European Union is speaking up. The so-called Progressive Alliance claims it is a group composed of more than 100 social democratic political parties and organizations all over the world. In a statement, Progressive Alliance says they are alarmed at the mounting cases of killings under President Duterte's war on drugs. The alliance adds they witnessed a war between social classes and political opposition and not a war against illegal drugs. Progressive Alliance adds they will keep a close eye on developments in the country and will take appropriate initiatives if necessary. Palace officials are clearing the air a day after President Duterte issues strong words against the Euro European Union. They say there is no directive for the EU delegation to exit the country. Our senior correspondent Ina Andalong tells us more. He cursed at the European Union. My God, do it, stupid do it now. You go. And told its ambassadors to leave. You leave my country in 24 hours. All. All of you. But he was barking at the wrong tree. A day after the president's tirades against the EU, his spokesman clarifies his boss was addressing himself to the international delegates of the Progressive Alliance. Not the EU, which the president thought was threatening to have the Philippines expelled from the United Nations because of the killings in its drug war. The seven-member delegation, which Malacanang says falsely claimed to represent the EU, called for an end to the killings and said the Philippines may risk losing the tax-free status of many of its products entering Europe. Ernesto Abella also blamed the media for causing the confusion. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez says he too saw something wrong with the reports that came out. Basically, he was reacting to what he was reading. Okay? Okay. He was reacting to what he was reading and what... So it's not a question of being misinformed. That means to say he was being fed wrong information. Yes. But based on... Frankly, kami rin eh. Ako, when I saw that, but ito na naman to. Sino to? Kasi nung when we talk to the guys in the EU, hindi naman ganyan yung dating nila, yung approach nila eh. Parang tingin ko nga, somebody asked them to come over at manggalit eh. For now, Malacanang is just taking back the president's directive, telling EU diplomats to leave. There is no directive to do that. As far as palace officials are concerned, all is well between the Philippines and the EU. The Trade Secretary met with EU officials last September to address any perception that may have been caused by negative publicity. Kasi, ano ba yung nare-release sa international media? Kasi, syempre, kung may balitang 
gum- nang galing dito lalo na at that time naalala ko at the height of the mat- yung mga teenagers na mga namatay so we were telling them uh, na may mga ganung incidents na unfortunately nangyari but our president number one, we assured them na ang presidente natin uh, ayaw talaga ng mga abuso na ganun The president has been made aware of the mistake, but no apology, at least for now. But Abelia says a clarification from the president himself may be forthcoming. Ina Adolong, CNN Philippines. Tell us what you think of this top story tonight. You can comment on our social media pages at CNN Philippines. We're also live right now on Facebook. A more local news later on in the show, but first a check on the top stories from around the world. Wildfires that continue to burn in Northern California are leaving affected counties in scorched ruins. As officials search for hundreds of residents still missing, they're finding bodies burnt beyond recognition. So far, 31 people have been killed, making this one of the deadliest wildfire outbreaks in the history of the U.S. state. Since Sunday, the deadly fires have leveled communities, forced evacuations, and produced unhealthy air quality in the affected areas. Police on both sides of the Atlantic are investigating Harvey Weinstein over allegations of sexual assault. This is the scandal surrounding the disgraced Hollywood movie Mogul Mounts. In London, the Metropolitan Police are investigating an allegation of sexual assault against Weinstein. While in New York, police are reviewing claims made by victims interviewed in a bombshell New Yorker article. More Hollywood stars are accusing Weinstein of inappropriate behavior Actress Rose McGowan and model actress Carrie De Levine and their voices or add their voices to the allegations. And Pope Francis has 40 million Twitter followers. As of this week, the Pope joined Twitter nearly five years ago. His Twitter handle at Pontifex can be accessed in nine languages. According to a press release from the Vatican, the Pontiff uses his daily tweets to offer spiritual thoughts throughout the world. This is Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. The military ramps up its offensive against ISIS-inspired terrorists as expectations rise that the crisis in Marawi City will soon be over. And President Duterte retains his big majority approval and trust ratings. We'll look at the numbers when Newsnight returns. Welcome to Facebook Live here on CNN Philippines News Night. Uh, Malacanang Palace, uh, as of last night, clarifying President Duterte's remarks that he made uh, against the European Union. Uh, presidential spokesperson Ernie Abelia speaking up uh, in a press conference or in an interview with uh, Malacanang Press Corps uh, members to clarify that uh, the president uh, was not attacking the European Union. Uh, there has been uh, th- those statements coming from Malacanang about that story. We'd like to say hello also to some of our viewers. Jesus Manzalinto, who's in Iloilo, Moralista Paulbe in Singapore, Ra- Rachel Che in New Zealand, Joe Lumibao in Marikina City, and Jack Hizon Perez, who's watching from Malabon. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Please stay with us until the end of the show. If you have any other thoughts or opinions that you'd like to share with us, uh, please send them in comment down below or if you're on Twitter just tweet us tag us at CNN Philippines this is news night on CNN Philippines a new Pulse Asia survey shows President Duterte is still enjoying high approval and trust ratings as the administration faces a number of issues data show 80 percent or 8 out of 10 respondents say they approve of the Duterte presidency. Only 7% say otherwise, 13% are undecided. The president also managed to retain his majority trust rating also at 80%. Paul Seisha says the numbers remain virtually constant since June. This latest survey was conducted from September 24 to 30 among 1,200 respondents nationwide. Malacanang is pleased with the news of President Duterte's high approval and trust ratings. Presidential spokesman Ernie Abelia says the results prove that the public is not easily swayed by political noise. Abelia points out the survey was even conducted at a time when what he says was a demolition job against the president and his family was in place. There seemed to be time, you know, or whoever it was, it's coming from, there seems to be some form of orchestrated, uh, orchestrated information, disinformation, uh, that, 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 is, that is in operation. 
Abelia says he'd rather not speculate in who may be behind the demolition job, but he says it's clear that they are out to discredit the president. Lawmakers are also weighing in on the ratings. I have no doubt that the president can bounce back. Um, I think uh, maging klaro pa yung ninanais niya sa ating uh, pamahalaan. For Senate President Coco Pimentel, he says the results are accurate. Senator Sani Angara says public sentiment changes from time to time, just like what happened to other presidents. Senator Ping Laksong, meanwhile, pointed out the difference in the results of this Pulse Asia survey and another poll released early this week. A social weather station survey on Monday showed fewer Filipinos are satisfied with the president's performance. That survey was conducted from September 23 to 27. Now, how do Filipinos rate the performance of other top government officials? Here are the results from the latest Social Weather Station survey. Data show Vice President Lenny Robredo's net satisfaction rating stayed good at plus 41. That's up by five points since June this year. Senate President Coco Pimentel's rating also stayed good at a personal record high of plus 46 in September. This surpassed his previous record of plus 37 in the same period last year. Robredo welcomes the results of the survey. She says this could mean people are beginning to see the positive things she's done through different programs, among those her anti-poverty advocacy program called Angat Buhay. Happy with the, with the rice. Um, gusto kong sabihin, nararamdaman ng tao yung ating ginagawa. Uh, gusto kong sabihin, um, parang accept, accepted ng tao yung, yung kabutihan na ginagawa natin despite the very limited resources. Um, malaking bagay din na nararamdaman na Kasi lalong nagbibigay ito sa amin na lakas at inspirasyon na lalong pagbutihin, lalong palawakin yung aming ginagawa. For House Speaker Bebot Alvarez, his rating fell from moderate to neutral at a personal record low of plus 8. Same thing goes for Chief Justice Marilur de Sereno, whose rating also fell to neutral at plus 9. This is her lowest net satisfaction rating score since December 2015. Intense firefights were observed in Marawi City Friday morning as troops continued to flush out the remnants of the ISIS-inspired Mata group in the city. The local government asks authorities to do its best to ensure that no more Mata fighters will be left as they wind up operations. Our George Kahila says that story. Kilometers away from the main battle area, continuous gunfire and bomb explosion filled the air Friday morning indicating an intense firefight between government troops and ISIS-inspired Mata group. Authorities say the battle is confined within a three-hectare area near the lake. And as they are now confined to a smaller space, no, we, we uh, anticipated more intense fighting. No? Kasi nga po, mas uh, concentrated na yung mga maute in certain places so they can, they can give us a strong resistance. The military earlier said it is confident it will meet its October 15 deadline to end the war. But now, the armed forces clarifies they do not have any deadline, just a self-imposed target to finish the fight. We don't want to call it a deadline. No? Hindi po natin siniset na deadline yon because it brings undue pressure on the, uh, on the troops. So, meron po tayong targets. No? Targets na... Once the war is over, a second wave of clearing operations will be carried out. Authorities will once again scour buildings, tunnels, and other underground structures. This is an example of a drainage system inside the main battle area. The military says these could be used as passageways for stragglers who may escape or create more terror after the war. Our position is to clear the NBA not only of the uh, ordinances, but combatants, fighters from the Maoti side, leaders and their uh, foot soldiers. The military says the ongoing war has taught them so many lessons, things that they need to improve on next time. Especially in urban warfare, their shortfall in this ongoing siege. From Marawi City, George Cahiles, CNN Philippines. Communications Secretary Martin Andanar visits Marawi in the wake of rising expectations that the crisis is about to end 
Andanar says the administration is preparing for the eventual liberation of Marawi. The military says the fighting that has stretched to over nearly five months may end soon. Andanar is setting up government's messaging mechanism once the war ends. He will highlight the Maranao's resiliency. He visited an evacuation center in Iligan before going to Marawi, where he met with military and local officials. Uh, we are very hopeful, uh, based on the report of the armed forces of the Philippines, na ito ay malapit na matapos. So we are readying ourselves uh, in the eventuality na mangyari ito para mabilis yung aming uh, pag-aksyon. And the NARS office is also setting up the local operation of Salam TV and Radio, a state-run media hub which aims to give a voice to Filipino Muslims. A former head of state has issued a warning to the ASEAN about China's offers of friendship and funding. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad says China has become an economic giant in the region. He fears it will try to buy smaller countries. Mohamad uses the example of Africa, where China has poured in billions of dollars in loans for their infrastructure projects. And now China has put up various military bases across Africa. Mohamad urges the ASEAN to be wary of these economic links since it seems to be China's new way of conquering territories without having to wage war. Now we have a rich China investing in many countries, lending huge sums of money, and in the end, the borrowers find themselves uh, unable to resist the uh, Chinese uh, practically invasion. This one's for overseas Filipinos. What the government says will be the bank to meet your needs will open in January next year. That's according to Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello. The announcement comes after President Duterte issued an executive order forming the Overseas Filipino Bank, or OFB. Bello says a new OFW ID can be used for transactions in the bank. The latest data from the Commission on Filipinos Overseas show there are over 10 million Filipinos worldwide. Most of them are working or living in the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. The government warns the public against an advertising site called Plugo. The Securities and Exchange Commission says the site is not authorized to solicit investments. Currently, Plugo asks its users to shell out 1,000 pesos to join the site. Its promise? Income simply by logging in or by obtaining referrals. The Plugo Facebook account even tells users they can get up to double their investment in just 12 days. The SEC says Pluggle has yet to acquire a license or permit from the commissions. It also warns the site salesmen, brokers and agents that they may face a maximum fine of 5 million pesos and up to 21 years in jail. Friday the 13th and netizens are taking to social media to spread good vibes. In a concert for a mother who's battling cancer, CNN Philippines speaks with actor singer Marla Mortel for more details in his first ever major show. This is News Night, where we go above and beyond the headlines. Welcome back. It's rush hour, payday Friday, and the weather isn't that good outside. Let's check the conditions of the roads right now. Our Ivy is on our joins us live from Edsa, Julia Vargas in Pasig City. Ivy, what do you see there right now? 
PA is the end of the work week, but we're not sure if it's ending well for everyone, most especially for those stuck in heavy traffic this Friday. It's raining hard in different parts of the metro, plus it's the rush hour. There's also an ongoing sale in two shopping malls along Edsa Ortigas. The Metro Manila Development Authority has advised motorists to take alternate routes to avoid heavy traffic. Based on MMDA's traffic navigator, there's heavy traffic on both the south and northbound lanes of Edsa Quezon Avenue all the way to Pasay Road. So those planning to go out this Friday the 13th, a little patience is needed. We're seeing bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic along Nepa Q Mart, Aurora Boulevard, Pituazon, Santolan, and Ortigas. It's going to be an easy drive for those headed to Commonwealth, green and gold from elliptical road to Batasan and moderate to heavy traffic conditions from Araneta Avenue all the way to Espana. Pia? Ivy, any flooded areas that motorists should avoid? Well, due to heavy rains, there's uh, gutter deep floods along Meralco Avenue in Pasig and some parts of Ortigas. So just a reminder to all the motorists, take it easy on the road and uh, drive safely. Pia? Ivy Sonar live on EDSA. It is Friday the 13th today. Does this really bring bad luck? Well, we check what netizens are saying about their day so far. Our Mai Rodriguez has that and more in tonight's Connect. This day is usually associated with bad luck and superstition, but netizens are taking to social media to spread good vibes this Friday the 13th. On Twitter, Narisa Opiniano says she doesn't believe Friday the 13th is bad luck. At This Is Larry Ney echoes her sentiment saying, quote, I don't believe Friday the 13th will always bring bad luck. See, I just got a hundred bucks tip from my CNN Philippines in the news. President Rodrigo Duterte keeps his hands off his flagship campaign, the war on drugs. That's after turning over the fight to a new agency. Tropical storm Odette maintains its strength and it's taking its time before heading to China. Rains are expected over Metro Manila and nearby provinces. And the Jin Kings take Game 1 in the PBA Governor's Cup Finals. Good afternoon, I'm Mai Rodriguez. Thanks for joining us. An all-out war on drugs, a campaign promise of President Duterte, who once said he would step down if he fails to end it. Now he's changing his strategy against illegal drugs. He removes the national police at the helm and gives a job to the Drug Enforcement Agency. But is the PDEA ready for this tall order? Our Camila Badisho finds out. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is stepping up its operations after taking over the lead in the war on drugs. The agency admits the task is not easy, especially with lack of manpower. It will leave a, a big vacuum, especially on street-level operations. So unlike before, when PDEA used to focus only on um, high-value targets and high-impact operations, this time we will have to fill in the gap where the PNP left off. The PNP has about 195,000 personnel, in stark contrast to PDEA's almost 2,000 personnel nationwide. Malaking malaki talaga ang contribution ng PNP because they have the numbers. They have the presence all the way up to the municipalities. And uh, definitely, yung presensya nila nandun, natutugunan nila kaagad, yung street-level pushing. PIDEA is planning to recruit 1,000 to 1,500 agents every year to fill in the gap. But this means additional budget, as training will cost 200,000 pesos per agent or 300 million for 1,500 agents. PDEA's budget is at 1.4 billion pesos, plus 934.5 million pesos for additional facilities, equipment, and manpower for 2018. But with their new role, PDEA says they would need more funds. Kulang na kulang talaga. Nail nga po, this was based on the premise that PDEA will focus on high-value targets and conducting high-impact operations. While transitioning to a much bigger task, they would seek assistance from the PNP. Konti na nga po kami. If we deploy on the ground and then... Uh, we are doing the actual anti-drug operation and then hostile forces start firing on us and we get pinned down. Who will help us? We're ready to provide support to the PDEA, whether it's coming from the national down to the municipal level. When we, they need our support, we are, we are working for the same government. So we will not deny them any of the assistance that we can provide them. 
With over 76,000 anti-drug operations, the police produced 90% of the results of the drug war from July 2016 to September 2017. But the relentless campaign has a price. Over 3,000 drug suspects dead in police operations, while Pidea agents killed only 28 suspects. Camille Abadisho, CNN Philippines. President Duterte also now says he's off the drug campaign. In an interview on PTV4, the president says he will entrust the problem entirely to the Drug Enforcement Agency. He also tells the police to just leave if they see an illegal drug activity. The president says this is his response to critics who blame the government for the killings. Here's the president in his own words. Ako, I will not anymore interfere. Pagka ngayon talaga, hindi hugas kamay. Ayaw ko talaga, hindi ako naghugas. Ayaw ko na. Police, wag na kayong makialam. Military, wag na kayong makialam. PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa says he accepts President Duterte's decision to take the anti-drug campaign off their hands. Speaking to CNN Philippines, De La Rosa, however, says he can't help but feel sad over the decision. Still, he considers this development a positive step. Policemen ko man o yung mga drug personalities, still uh, buhay pa rin ang tao yun. So, uh, kung ba, yung, uh, anyway, uh, just, I just uh, uh, look at it uh, positively, yung executive order na yun. Uh, sabi sa ni Presidente, Masyado ka ng pagod, anak, pahinga ka na. Ito, hindi natin magpaplastikan. Oo, uh, sir. Sure. Prostrated si Presidente sa naging reaksyon ng taong bayan. It, it goes to show na si Presidente hindi diktador. Na, na nakiramdam siya sa pulso ng taong bayan. Kung totoo man yun, ha, granting na talagang totoong sentimento ng, ng general public yung lumabas sa survey, sabi ni Presidente din, I am working for the Filipino people. So, ano yung gusto ng taong bayan? Disatisfied sila sa war on drugs? Yung hinto natin itong war on drugs. The Supreme Court has spoken. Senator Laila de Lima stays in jail for her drug case. But six justices sided with her, with a senior justice saying the High Court should never accept a fake charge. Anjo Alemario has more. A pure invention. This is how Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio describes the drug case against Senator Laila de Lima. In his dissenting opinion, Carpi argues essential elements of a drug sale or trade were missing in the charges of the Justice Department. He says the charges failed to identify the buyer, the seller, or the receiver of drugs. The Justice Department should have instead filed for direct bribery, a bailable offense, a case that falls under the Sandigan Bayan. Carpio says the High Court, the last bulwark of democracy and liberty, should never accept such a fake charge. Associate Justice Marvick Leonen says the majority's position isn't surprising, but it's deeply disturbing. Leonen backs Carpio's position that none of the allegations matches the crime of conspiracy to engage in drug trading. He points out it is reasonable to suspect that the Lima's case points to the use of the strong arm of the law to silence dissent. In his dissent, Associate Justice Alfred Benjamin Kagiwa agrees the majority's reasoning isn't only incomplete, Burst, it tends to validate a dangerous situation where an ordinary citizen can be arrested by mere allegation. Kagiwa argues if this can be done to a senator, this can happen to any citizen. For Carpio to let the Lima remain in jail is one of the grossest injustices ever perpetrated in recent history, in full view of the Filipino nation and the entire world. Anjali Mario, CNN Philippines. Intense gun battles continue as troops go for the final push to end the war and meet the military's October 15 deadline. The local government asks authorities to make sure no mounted fighter will be left in the city. George Cahiles has that story. Kilometers away from the main battle area, continuous gunfire and bomb explosion filled the air Friday morning indicating an intense firefight between government troops and ISIS-inspired Mauta group. Authorities say the battle is confined within a three-hectare area near the lake. And as they are now confined to a smaller space, no, we, we uh, anticipated more intense fighting. Because no? 
concentrated na yung mga baute in certain places so they can they can give us a strong resistance. The military earlier said it is confident it will meet its October 15 deadline to end the war. But now, the armed forces clarifies they do not have any deadline, just a self-imposed target to finish the fight. We don't want to call it a deadline. No? Hindi po natin siniset na deadline yon because it brings undue pressure on the, uh, on the troops. So, meron po tayong targets. No? Targets na pilit uh, inaabot. Once the war is over, a second wave of clearing operations will be carried out. Authorities will once again scour buildings, tunnels, and other underground structures. This is an example of a drainage system inside the main battle area. The military says these could be used as passageways for stragglers who may escape or create more terror after the war. Our position is uh, clear on the NBA not only of uh, the ordinances but combatants, fighters from the Maoti side, leaders and their uh, foot soldiers. The military says the ongoing war has taught them so many lessons, things that they need to improve on next time, especially in urban warfare, their shortfall in this ongoing siege. From Marawi City, George Cahiles, CNN Philippines. Tropical storm Odette maintained its strength and remained almost stationary, according to Pagasa. This means Metro Manila, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, Mimaropa, and Western Visayas will still experience moderate to occasionally heavy rains today. Signal number one is still up in Pangasinan. As of 11 a.m., the center of Odette was located at 315 kilometers west of Sinait, Ilocos Sur. It packs maximum sustained winds of 90 kilometers per hour. Odette is expected to exit the Philippine area of responsibility today. Agamulak was a sought-after leading man of his generation. On his return to the big screen, the actor shares with CNN Philippines a look back at his stellar career and some future plans. Our Tristan Nodalo has that story. He's dubbed as the country's original heartthrob and the ultimate leading man of the 80s and the 90s. But for Agam Mulak, playing the role was never easy. Wala akong gagawin pelikula hindi ko gusto. <clears throat> Wala akong gagawin pelikula na hindi ko iniisip ang mga viewers. Para iniisip ko kasi how how my viewers will react. Will they believe? Diba? Aga started his career as child actor in 1975, working with veteran actors like Fernando Poe Jr. and Christopher De Leon. He rose to stardom when he became one of the leads in Viva Film's teenage film, Baguettes. Sa atin, mas gusto kong gumawa ng simple na pelikula na tama ang paggawa at totoo ang panglasa. From Lea Salonga, Sharon Coneta, Claudine Barreto, to any other popular actress in the 90s, Aga's name was on the list of their ideal leading men. Now, Aga reveals there's no secret in becoming one. Kaya when, when they watch my films, parang it's, they're part of the experience. They're, they're part of my joy, so they feel that also. When I'm in love in the film, they feel that also. When, when, I, when I hurt in the film, or when I'm hurting in the film, they feel it also. Aga reveals he's ready to work with previous leading ladies, especially with the clamor to reunite with Sana Maulit Muli love team, Lea Salonga. Sana maulit muli, andyan na yan, ano? classic na siya. So if we do a movie again, dapat siya mas hihigitan niya, sana maulit muli. Pag hindi niya nahigitan niya, wag na natin gawin. So it's as simple as that. If, if we find a project, then it's gonna happen. He also wants to star in independent films, TV teleseries, and action films. A list of many firsts for a well-loved leading man. There's more to come. So yeah, I'm back. I was never gone. I was never going to pay him. <laughs> Tristan Nodalo, CNN Philippines. When the newsroom returns, President Duterte's trust ratings remain high, this time according to Pulse Asia. And Asia songbird Regine Velasquez delights fans with teasers from her special album. Back after a quick break, keep it here on CNN Philippines. Good afternoon to our viewers on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us again uh, this afternoon. Uh, still a big story today, yung, um, uh, the drug campaign, the war on drugs. Now, 
under the helm of the PIDEA, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. So uh, early this week, uh, tinapos na nga ng PNP yung kanilang Oplan Tokhang at Oplan Double Barrel. So controversial yun kasi from there, nagkaroon ng mga allegations ng summary killings, no? extrajudicial killings. At sinasabing yung, yung mga tinatarget na to, yun lang yung mga, the, only the poor are being targeted by this uh, drug uh, war. So ngayon si President Duterte binigay na nga sa PIDEA yung anti-drug campaign. So marami nag-react pa rin dito sa story na to. And especially since uh, the PIDEA uh, is currently undermanned for this uh, job, so sabi nga nila kailangan nilang mag-recruit ng 1,000 to 1,500 agents per year para matugunan nila yung mga requirements dito sa um, pag-lead pag, uh, nitong uh, anti-drug campaign. Also, um, coming up, more stories on uh, President Duterte, especially dun sa mga controversial remarks niya tukol dun sa mga EU ambassadors na pinapaalis na nga niya, no? sinabi niya nung Thursday, umalis kayo in 24 hours. So maraming reactions tukol dito and especially my clarification ang Malacanang dito sa statement ni President Duterte. Also, the President's ratings According to Pulse Asia and the SWS, uh, magkaiba ang uh, rating sila yung results ng survey nitong dalawang poll firms na to. So tignan natin dun sa analysis sa susunod na pagbabalik after this short break. Ngayon, pwede ko nang batiin yung mga viewers natin no ngayon uh, nanonood sa Facebook Live si Richard Lactawen uh, watching from Hawaii. Si Mary Vicera Torres, watching from Italy. Beng Kalunsad, from Kuwait. Gina Cardines, watching from Malaysia. Mario Bonza says, good day to you, Miss Mai. Good day din sa iyo. Watching from Japan, I hope you're having a great day there. Um, do keep sending us your comments and your um, reactions to the stories today. And do check out our um, social media accounts. Yun ang sa Facebook at sa Twitter para pwede kayong mag-comment. Stay tuned. In the newsroom on CNN Philippines. Welcome back. President Duterte has issued strong words against the European Union, but now palace officials make it clear there's no order to let the EU delegation leave the country. Our senior correspondent Ina Andolong tells us more. He cursed at the European Union. My God, do it, stupid. Do it now. Go. And told its ambassadors to leave. You leave my country in 24 hours. All. All of you. But he was barking at the wrong tree. A day after the president's tirades against the EU, his spokesman clarifies his boss was addressing himself to the international delegates of the Progressive Alliance, not the EU, which the president thought was threatening to have the Philippines expelled from the United Nations because of the killings in its drug war. The seven-member delegation, which Malacanang says falsely claimed to represent the EU, called for an end to the killings and said the Philippines may risk losing the tax-free status of many of its products entering Europe. Ernesto Abella also blamed the media for causing the confusion. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez says he too saw something wrong with the reports that came out. Basically, he was reacting to what he was reading. Okay? Okay. He was reacting to what he was reading and what... So it's not a question of being misinformed. That means to say he was being fed wrong information. Yes. But based on frankly, kami rin eh. Ako when I saw that, but ito na naman to. At sino to? Kasi nung when we talk to the guys in the EU, hindi naman ganyan yung dating nila, yung approach nila eh. Parang tingin ko nga, somebody asked them to come over at manggalit eh. For now, Malacanang is just taking back the president's directive, telling EU diplomats to leave. There is no directive to do that. As far as palace officials are concerned, all is well between the Philippines and the EU. The Trade Secretary met with EU officials last September to address any perception that may have been caused by negative publicity. Kasi ano ba yung nare-release sa international media? Kasi syempre kung may balitang 
gum- nanggaling dito, lalo na at that time, naalala ko, at the height of the month, yung mga teenagers na mga namatay. So we were telling them uh, na may mga ganong incidents na unfortunately nangyari, but our president, number one, we assured them na ang presidente natin uh, ayaw talaga ng mga abuso na ganon. The president has been made aware of the mistake, but no apology, at least for now. But Abelia says a clarification from the president himself may be forthcoming. Ina Andolong, CNN Philippines. The so-called Progressive Alliance says it's a group composed of more than 100 social democratic political parties and organizations all over the world. In a statement, it says it is alarmed at the mounting cases of drug killings. The alliance adds the delegation witnessed a war between social classes and political, political opposition and not a war against illegal drugs. The group intends to keep a close eye on developments in the country and will, quote, take appropriate initiatives if necessary. A new Pulse Asia survey shows President Duterte still enjoys high approval and trust ratings. As the administration faces a number of issues, data show 80% of Filipinos approve of the Duterte presidency. Only 7% say otherwise, while 13% are undecided. The president also managed to keep his majority trust rating also at 80 percent. Pulse Asia says the numbers remained virtually constant since June. This latest survey was conducted from September 24 to 30 among 1,200 respondents nationwide. Another showbiz couple are ready to tie the knot. Rojun Cruz and Diane Medina are now engaged. Cruz posted a video on Instagram showing him proposing to Medina with the view of Barakay. This coincides with his 30th birthday celebration. Diane also posted on her IG stories her engagement ring with a caption, In God's Perfect Time. These showbiz sweethearts have been together for more than 10 years now. Now still ahead, Filipino horror film Spirit of the Glass gets a sequel 13 years later. We give you a preview. And Xander Ford speaks up about bullying and how it has helped him. This is Newsroom Weekend on CNN Philippines. Stay tuned.